Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 1st, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. I started out the morning by scanning the lake, but it was pretty cold and windy, so I didn't last very long. The count was conducted from the south lookout today. The winds were strong from the northwest and then weakened a little bit as the day went on, but still felt pretty chilly by the end of the day. The temperatures never got out of the 30s, and even though it started overcast, it became mostly sunny for most of the day. Here's a flock of nine wood ducks that flew by. Here we have a gray raptor that's hunting low to the ground, and we see a white rump patch. This is a male northern harrier. And here's the underside of that same adult male northern harrier. Here we have a swallow that's blue on top and white underneath. This is a tree swallow, and I only saw a few tree swallows today compared to the past few days when we had southerly winds and we're seeing hundreds of them. Here we have another raptor hunting low to the ground. We see it's holding its wings up into a V, also known as a dihedral. We see an owl-like facial disc. This is another northern harrier, and because of the overall brownish plumage with a lot of streaking to the upper breast, makes this an adult female northern harrier. Here we have a stripy sparrow with some yellow in front of the eye. This is a savanna sparrow. As expected with those northwesterly winds, the main migrant of the day was turkey vultures. Here's one that gave us a really nice look, and it was just sort of a slow trickle of turkey vultures throughout the day, never really seeing groups of more than five or six, but by the end of the day, they had added up to nearly 500. Here's an adult red-tailed hawk that was getting chased by two American crows, and the red tail had some sort of prey. And speaking of red tails, here we have one gliding overhead. Note the belly band and the dark patagial bars, and the adults have that dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail. Here's a nice look at a male eastern bluebird that perched on the rock at the south lookout. Here we have another adult red-tailed hawk, and this one's very dark and heavily marked, so this is probably the northern subspecies. Here we have a large, lanky, black and white raptor. This is an osprey, and it actually has something in its talons. And this shot shows that item a little bit better. It almost looks like a bone with some meat on it or something. It doesn't quite look like a fish, though. A group of turkey vultures were gathering in the field behind the lookout, and this one even has its wings open sunning. Here we have a small raptor with a long tail and rounded wings, so we should be thinking a small hawk, specifically an excipiter. We see a very small head on this bird, and we see kind of a compact shape overall with some rounded, bulging secondaries. This is a sharp-shinned hawk. Here's another red-tailed hawk, and on this one we have a more standard-looking belly band and a pale throat, typical of the eastern or borealis subspecies. Here we have a large raptor high overhead. We see a white head and a white tail with a black band at the end of the tail and just a little bit of white speckling to the underside. This is a bald eagle that's almost a full adult. Here we have two raptors flying together. Now, do you think these are the same species or two different species? Well, if we look at the size, the shape, and the overall plumage, they look pretty much identical. So these are both the same species, and we see belly bands and dark patagial bars making these red-tailed hawks. But we see they do not have that bold dark trailing edge to the wings, and the tail is more brownish with bands to it. These are juvenile red-tailed hawks. Here we have a large, mostly dark raptor with a large head. This is an eagle, and we see it has a white underside of the body and white in the wing pits, making this an immature bald eagle. Here's one more quiz photo. The part sticking out to the right on the bottom is the neck and head. Then you have the wings up in a V and then long trailing legs. So a large, slow flapping bird with long trailing legs and a neck held out straight would be a sandhill crane. Taking a look at the eBird list, today I had 31 species, but none of them were new for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 478 turkey vultures, one osprey, four bald eagles, one northern harrier, three sharp-shinned hawks, one cooper's hawk, one red-shouldered hawk, and 14 red-tailed hawks for a total of 503 migrating raptors. That brings the season total to 18,806. 
taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow. It's looking cloudy with rain moving in late in the afternoon, probably around 4 or 5 p.m., a high in the mid 40s and winds east southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So that's a pretty good wind direction. Southeasterly winds would be the ideal wind direction. And those winds are especially good for being a bit of a headwind that keeps the migrating raptors low and right over the north lookout. So I'm thinking it could be a pretty good day tomorrow. It may not be a huge day in terms of volume if the conditions aren't good enough to get the big birds up like red tails and vultures and eagles, but I would expect it to be a pretty good flight of things like harriers and sharpies and kestrels. So we'll see how it turns out, and maybe the big birds will get up and we'll get another big flight of turkey vultures, but being a headwind, it keeps things low and slow. For Thursday, we're looking at morning showers and then partly cloudy with a high much warmer in the mid-60s and winds south-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So that's a good strong southerly wind. I would expect it to be another good raptor flight. Though keep in mind those southwesterly winds tend to put the birds up higher and sometimes out over the lake. So sometimes we don't get as good a look at the birds, but it should be a pretty good volume of birds as long as the conditions don't end up being too gloomy. We'll take another look tomorrow to see the timing of when that rain will be ending. And for Friday, it's looking partly cloudy with a high in the mid 40s, winds west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that'll be another day at the south lookout and pretty similar to today. So I would expect similar results, probably a moderate flight of turkey vultures and smaller numbers of other species. All right, well, today ended up being a half decent day with a steady flight of turkey vultures, and it turned into a beautiful day once the sun came out. We have some good winds coming up, so I think we'll probably have some pretty good flights the next few days and probably a lot of visitors too. I would recommend that you stick to parking in the parking lots rather than going in the grass just because with all the rain we've had, the ground is very soft and could get muddy and we don't want anyone getting their car stuck. Remember, if the parking lot at the North Lookout is full, you can park in the parking lot down on Sage Creek Drive and then walk up either the path or that might be a bit muddy. You can always just walk up the road up to the North Lookout. Hope to see you out soon at Derby Hill. From Lake O'Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.